the maintenance of prayers and the giving of zakat and they used to worship us. So this verse of Holy Quran is talking about the divine guidance is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is Allah who divinely guides mankind. And it is the task that Allah has kept upon Himself to guide mankind. That's why we find here in this word that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we are the ones who appoint the Imams and they are appointed not without our mandate. They come with our command. They come with our mandate. And they are the ones to whom we uh, narrate and we reveal the good actions and what is salat and what is zakat. While these are the ones who are our worshippers. They are our abedee. So my dear brothers and sisters, this shows that the task of guidance to mankind lies with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or with the Imam who had been appointed by Allah and who had been given that divine mandate. And this is how we find the prophets of Allah when they came, they came with this divine mandate. And that divine mandate was manifested in the form of uh, miracles that we find the prophets of Allah uh, have shown miracles. This was the divine mandate that would show mankind that they have been divinely guided and this message is purely coming from the Creator Himself. Now, if we are already on the path, why are we not then on that situation, under the situation where we can prevail? Why is there so much corruption? Why is there so much oppression? Why is there so much zulm that we see all around us? What is it that is holding us from attaining the stature of those who have attained that stature during the life of the Holy Prophet? It seems that there are some very fundamental reasons and amongst them, let us go and see how Amir al-Mu'mineen, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib mentions what are the shortcomings that are holding us back from attaining the station that Allah has promised. Because if Allah had sent his Imam, if Allah had sent his guide, and there is a divine mandate, we have to attain that guidance. However, we find ourselves spiritually weak, we find Muslims living in Muslim lands but their spirits are low or they are being run by oppressive uh, systems only because we have not attained that level of Iman that is necessary for us to go beyond our desire to do what is right for the sake of Islam, to do what is right for the sake of the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now I will share with you um, <coughs> the advice that Ali ibn Abi Talib advises to his companions what is holding us off. The Imam says uh, in this narration to his companions that if you can find this recipe, my dear brothers and sisters, the Imam is giving us a very uh, comprehensive solution to our spiritual uh, deprivation, to our spiritual uh, poverty that we go through. Although we find ourselves physically and financially progressing, but if our spiritual state is not improving, there are some fundamental reasons for it. And this is what the Imam is mentioning here when he advises to his companions. Here the Imam says, Oh believers, if you really want to go on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, far for this dunya, abandon this world. Abandon this world. Why? Because the love of this world makes a person blind. The love of this world makes the person deaf. And the love of this world makes the person speechless until he would be humiliated and he 
he will be drawn into this world. So this humiliation that this world brings to us by making our necks bow down is out of the love of this world, the love of this dunya that we have. Because of the love of this world, we end up keeping quiet in places where we are supposed to speak. Why? Because of the love of this world. We do not want our situation to change. We are fearful for the consequences. Or with the love of this world, we might see something and act as if we have not seen it. Why? Because the love of this world compels us to keep quiet because if we speak about what we are seeing, then it is going to have consequences on ourselves. And we are not willing to deal with those consequences. Or when we hear something, this love of this world compels us to ignore as if we are not hearing. Why? Because it is going to have consequences upon us. Whether they are due to fear of our own lives or whether they are due to fear of losing what we have. But it is the love of this world that compels us to be blind and to be deaf and to be dumb. So what we need to do is ensure that we could try and strive to eradicate the love that we have for this world. How do we do it? When the Imam is asked, the Imam says, فَتَدَارَتْ مَا بَخِيَا مِنْ عُمْرِكَ وَلَا تَقُلْ غَدًا أَوْ بَادَ غَدٍ So look, evaluate at your own situation and at the remainder of your lives and do not put things off for tomorrow. Do not let things go beyond and say, okay, I'm going to do, I realize I am wrong, I realize I should not be doing this, I should not be hearing this, I should not be speaking this, but I am going to change from tomorrow. And the Imam is saying, do not procrastinate by saying that you are going to do this tomorrow. Evaluate what is left of you and your life and do not postpone things. And then the Imam is reminding us of the consequences of those who have postponed uh, in the past. فَإِنَّمَا حَلَكَ مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكَ بِإِقَامَتِهِمْ عَلَىٰ عَلَىٰ الْأَمَانِ وَالْتَسْبِيرِ Those who have been destroyed before you had been destroyed because they ended up establishing themselves or fulfilling their desires. Or, and that was one thing, they were either engaged in fulfilling their desires or they were procrastinating. They were being lazy. They were not willing to act. They recognized what was their shortcoming, but they were not willing to act upon it. Or they recognized, but they were so absorbed in the life of this world, in the love of this dunya, that they were willing to get the hereafter path from them, but they were engaged in fulfilling their desires that they have from the life of this world. And the Imam says, If they did continue in this mode until the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala overtook them and approached them while they were heedless, while they were a ghafil, they were in the state of Heedlessness. And they were transferred, they were moved back to their promised places, to their graves they were moved back. And now the Imam is describing how these graves would be. These are the graves which are going to be dark and which are going to be narrow. My dear brothers and sisters, the love of this world makes us blind. The love of this world makes us deaf. The love of this world makes us speechless. The love of this world humiliates us. And if we really want to get out of that mode, we
we need to first recognize the consequences of those who have passed before us. And the consequences Imam Ali is mentioning is that they were destroyed because of two things. One was they were engaged and completely absorbed in fulfilling their desires. And the other reason was that they were procrastinating. They were lazy. They knew what was the right thing to be done, but they kept postponing and they were not willing to act upon it until they are awakened by the angel of death who overtakes them. And then they are transferred to their graves which are dark and narrow. Uh, and the Imam continues and he says, and this was being done by their own family and their friends. Their own family and their friends agreed upon sending them to their graves which are narrow and which are dark. So what should we do? The Imam says, uh, So disconnect ourselves. Disassociate ourselves. Cut off ourselves towards Allah. Cut off ourselves from this world and go towards Allah with a penitent heart. A heart that is willing to return to his creator. A heart which is willing to repent. A heart which is willing to do tawbah. Repent and go towards his Lord. Qalbin munibin min rafzid dunya. This dunya, disassociate yourself, cut off yourself from the attractions of this dunya. And then the Imam continues and mentions how one of the fundamental things that need to be uh, the, the foundation of this effort is an unshattering determination. Azm, having an unshattering and unwavering determination for doing it. If we have that, my dear brothers and sisters, that is the first step towards returning our law. We do not mean to say here that we are promoting the idea where we want to close the doors of our houses and our rooms and sit in one uh, room, isolating ourselves from this world. No, the love of this world means that you are willing to give your priorities of your religion for the sake of this dunya. That is not what Allah wants. That is not what the Prophet of Allah wants. That is not what Imam Ali wants. If we are willing to give for the sake of Allah, even from this dunya, then we are on the path of Sirat al-Mustaqeem. But if we are willing to sacrifice our deen, if we are willing to sacrifice our religion, if we are willing to sacrifice our values for the sake of this dunya, then we have sold ourselves out for the sake of this dunya. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He would inspire us and help us so that we can truly attain a stage where we could not be amongst those who have sold themselves for the sake of this dunya. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wal-Azr inna al-Insana lafi khusr إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالسر صدق الله العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وقادم النبيين ورحمة للعالمين عبد القاسم محمد وعلى أخيه وابن عمه وفهره وقليفته من بعده وقائم الغر المحجلين يا سيد الدين إمام المتقين أمير المؤمنين علي بن عبي طالب وعلى ابنته الطاهرة الحوراء اللهم صل على عائمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين 
ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد وحسن بن علي وحجة القائم المنتظر المهدي اللهم صل على محمد وعلي وجدك على عبادك وعمنائك في بلادك اللهم سحل من حجه وعجل في فرجهم وجعلنا من محبيهم ومباليهم وشيعتهم ولعنة الله على عدائهم عجمعين من يومنا هذا إلى قيام يوم الدين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I begin in the name of Allah the most beneficent and most merciful we first invite ourselves and then you all my dear brothers and sisters towards attaining and acquiring the quality which is the source of salvation from the life of this world and which is the source of protecting us from the fire of hell and that is taqwa Allah, that is God weariness and that is God consciousness. My dear brothers and sisters, the love of this world instigates and conspires against us although it shows us as if that they are, it is with us and it is for us. But in the end, the love of this world is the source of all corruption. And that is what Ali ibn Abi Talib is mentioning when he says that the love of this world makes a person blind. The love of this world makes a person deaf and dumb. The love of this world would humiliate a person. So if we truly want to be on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a penitent heart, a heart which is willing to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by emancipating and freeing ourselves from the love of this world. We find ourselves engulfed in so many challenges on day-to-day -day basis, my dear brothers and sisters, where we have a choice to make a choice whether it is right in the, in the eyes of Islam or it is right for your own benefit and for your own world. And if we are true believers, we will choose Islam first. We will keep Islam as a priority rather than keeping our desires as priority. We find Muslims are engulfed in so many difficulties all over the world. Although we know that a champion of the oppressed amongst our time, Nelson Mandela passed away and the values that he shared and the values that he stood up for are the values which Islam promotes, are the values of having a, a unrelenting conviction and faith in standing up against truth, uh, 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 with truth, being true against the falsehood and standing up against oppression and standing up against uh, uh, against the the color and the and the uh, discrimination that goes on around the world in the name of uh, in the name of color of the skin in the name of the language that we speak all those values were brought by rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and they are shared by muslims and we all are aware that the only criteria with which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna akramakum indallahi atqaakum The only honored amongst you, the only noble amongst you are the ones who have higher taqwa, who have higher piety, who have higher god boriness And these are the values with which Muslims should live. And when Muslims do not live with those values, their names might be Muslim, but they do not represent Islam or the teachings of Rasulullah. And we find this in this person that he stood up uh, against oppression, showing humanity that even if you are one and even if you are living for 30 years in jail, it is still worth it to stand up against oppression. So we as Muslims should learn and be inspired and see how we as Muslims should stand up against the tyrants of our time, to stand up against the oppressors of our time and should not keep quiet and should not uh, act as if we have not heard and should not uh, look as if we have not seen but rather stand up for truth because it is the promise of Allah. Allah says that He is going to prevail the religion of Islam is going to prevail no matter what uh, we do as Muslims. Allah promises that Islam is going to prevail. If we become one of those who have backed Islam with our actions, then we are going to
going to be the winners, but Allah does not need our help. It is us who need Allah's help. And therefore, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, during the time that we are living, which are very challenging and testing times, O oh Allah, keep us on the path of Sirat al Mustaqeem. O oh Allah, keep us such that we would take pride in being Muslims. O oh Allah, give us the courage and the motivation to live up to the Sirah and the Sunnah of Rasulullah. O oh Allah, forgive those who have passed away from our community. O oh Allah, hasten the appearance of Imam Mahdi Sahib al Asr wa Zaman. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim wa al Asr. إِنَّ الْعِنْسَانَ لَفِي خُسْ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ عَامَنُوا وَعَامِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ